in the middle of the Blassie fan club, even just getting the correspondence and the fan letters, the pen pals, I guess you'd call them, with fans from around the country and around the world. Uh, and that's uh, the notorious time when I got the uh, letter and the membership for my Fred Blassie fan club, the $5 check from, uh, from Mike Leno. <laughs> Okay, now, from, from LA. And, and we've, uh, Brian and I on both of our shows have rever- referred to uh, Dr. Mike in the past and his no- notorious misadventures of, of his own. Um, mm-hmm. Mike, it, 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 he was a fan, obviously, before he was a dentist, right? It, tell us about the early years of Dr. Mike Leno, uh, wrestling's most noted orthodontist, dentist. A very peculiar person. I mean, he, he, you know, in the beginning stages, he was writing letters and he started sending, submitting like reports from Los Angeles for the Freddie Blassie uh, King of Men newsletter and started writing. I mean, he was like sending me interviews with Kinji Shibuya and, and, you know, later I discovered they were all fucking made up. But I mean, I didn't know at the time I was 15 yeah, every, years old. Every, you know? every, every wrestler that Dr. Mike Leno has ever interviewed speaks in the cadence and the, the phrases of speech and the patterns yeah. of, of <laughs> Dr. Mike Leno. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that was crazy, but he, he, he was a, you know, regular correspondent. And then he started, we used to exchange like uh, audio tapes, cassette tapes. And he invited me out to Los Angeles to see the 1974, Battle Royal, which was always like the biggest event of the year for me when I started following. It was like the Battle Royal. I mean, that the Olympic oh, yeah. Auditorium, that was but huge. It was it would, huge. It would, it would make Aptor's Magazine cover the year that Bruno won. It was like, yeah. oh, my God. You know, yeah, that, that was a big, big iconic moment. iconic magazine. Yeah, so I was uh, out there, and it was like Andre the Giant's first Battle Royal out there. And, of course, he won. And uh, and it was, it was kind of like my trip out to L.A. I, I had never been on an airplane before. Um, I remember the round trip airfare was like 179 bucks from New York to LA. And I stayed with Mike and his grandparents and they took me to, uh, Disney, Disneyland. Uh, and then we spent the weekend at My Richard God, Dawson. That, 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 that trip could have gone horribly wrong. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> fortunate, yeah, it was raining the whole time. So, you know, I didn't get to see much. I'm just grandpa- talking about his grandparents a, were nice. <laughs> yeah. The, the whole family of Mike Leno takes a young man from New York to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. That could have gone terribly wrong. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but, uh, you know, and then we spent the weekend because he was friends with Mark and Gary Dawson, who were the sons of Richard Dawson, uh, the celebrity. Oh. Yeah, you know, Family Feud, match game at the time he was on and spent the weekend there. And it was kind of like for me, I'm this kid coming from a working class family in New York. I'd never been to California. I'd never been to a movie star's house or a TV star's house. And it was kind of really impressive and I had a good time. And uh, there was no nothing that really stood out in my mind about the guy being uh it's really weird or you know what he became uh but i did yeah but i did notice that you know the dawson kids were extremely entitled or spoiled and and it was just kind of a bizarre scene there and his and his father you know when i was leaving uh to go back to new york richard dawson i went you know i was getting some autographed pictures for my family because they were fans and and he was like what are you gonna do in new york sell these fucking things and he was like really like <laughs> that i was asking you for an autograph i was like no i'm giving it to my fucking sister and my mom i mean they're fans of yours you know hey, so got out of la did he and say that was the accent too did he say it with it did, what are you going to do yeah in new york? yeah exactly sell these fucking things i was like oh my Holy god shit so that was kind of wild for me, and then uh, and then I went home, and and then you know I, I I wanted to return the favor and invite Mike to uh, hang out, go to Philadelphia for TV tapings in the summer, and you know hang out at the garden, go to his first garden show, and and uh, uh, you know what I didn't ex- what I didn't anticipate or expect that the guy decided like you know instead of spending a weekend or a few days in New York, he said he wanted to come and spend the summer with me. Which I- <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, um, mom, dad, um, you know, this guy wants to hang out and a friend of mine in LA. And I was like, yeah, you know, but not, you know, John, the summer, not for the summer. I was like, no, no, I understand. And then he managed to, uh, then decide to spend a couple weeks with us. Oh, good and Lord. Then, 
And then got, well, he didn't last that long because I threw him out. That's when it started. <laughs> so he, he, he managed to get with Mike Ratchner and Diane DeMine and, and go to St. Louis after New York. But I threw him out after it was like a week and a half. Uh, because he showed up and what, immediately. Yeah, I, was, I was about to say, back, back up chronologically and, and tell yeah. us about the, the, the personal habits and or picadillos of this young man that could get him tossed out. In 10 days. Well, here it was bizarre right from the beginning. You know, my family, we had no money. OK, and he came from some money. We had no we didn't have a phone in our house. So when we when we wanted to make a phone call, we'd have to go up to the store and, and it was pay phone, you know. So Mike was like, you don't have a telephone here? I was like, well, we have telephones in California. Well, of course you do. I, you just don't have any money. Yeah. So he, he basically they said, I need to call. He, to Mississippi. He, yeah. He, yeah, he insists that, and I'm living, I live, we lived on Long Island, which was, you know, middle class. Uh, so he shows up, and the very first day, he like, he goes, I need to call my grandparents. And, and so, all right, we'll take, we'll take a walk to the store. And he comes out, and he's in his pajamas. And he goes, this is what we do in California. So I was like, you're going to walk out in the street in your pajamas to make a phone call and just like hang out. And he did. And, and it was like, and I was like, this is something a little wrong. I knew there was something wrong with him mentally, like the very first day. And my sister, who was five years younger than me, my sister, Donna, like, you know, it, it was, you know, he was kind of like, irritating her from like minute one and like making sexually suggestive comments to her and her little girlfriends. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was bizarre, but the most and how, bizarre how old, thing, how old of a, of a young man was Dr. Mike Leno at this point? I think he was 16, 17, same age as I was. Okay. My sister was like 12 or 13, oh, something Jesus. like that. So it was just kind of, it was just kind of weird. It was really, it was weird. And she hated him off the bat. I mean, she just hated him. I mean, and uh, her and her girlfriend actually uh, went through his stuff after like three or four days because they were like he he took over her room. He was spending, uh, you know, he he took he was the guest in her room. We didn't have a guest bedroom, and then she went in there to get something or something happened where she actually discovered that he was stealing my mail. <laughs> she found a bunch of my mail in like in her room in his suitcase or something, and that's when I was like. Mike, you know, you, you got to leave. You you, you got to go. So, uh, well, what, so what I threw was him the out. conversation like when he was in the house and 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 dressed out of and out of his pajamas and and dressed? Uh, what what did, was there to talk about at that point? Oh, we were well, you know talking about wrestling, but I mean, it was just kind of it was just kind of he was very. I just noticed that even from the when I was in California, I didn't pick up on any of these eccentricities. Or these whatever mental illness situation with him, but um, I mean, when he was in New York, it was just a totally different person. He was obnoxious. He was rude. Uh, he was in, felt you know a very entitled personality. But you know, then he turned into a thief by stealing my mail and making sexually suggestive comments to my underage sister. So um, we had to get rid of him. We got rid of him. He had to go. And and that was the end of the friendship. And then you sent him to Diane Devine. Poor Diane. Well, he said, "Well, he's still in touch with her, from what I understand. I, don't, I think he is, anyway." But he wrote me a letter. Then I got a letter in the mail. Um, it was like a fifteen-page letter, and I wish I, I I I just found it not too long ago, and I think I read it to Brian one other one other time. Some passages of it, which was a rambling apology letter, uh, blaming you know his. His behavior on the fact that his mom is dying of MS and and it's all of this just stuff and it was kind of over at that point for me and and then I ran into him and uh, the following year in Boston um, or the year after it, it just never it just never gelled and, and that's that when the. That started a, a trend with him for quite a while. Is he? Because I always wondered how, from an early age, he was able to fly from California to New York and cover these big cards and back and forth just with frequency. And 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 then, d d d do you have? Was he a licensed dentist? Is that, that's a yes or no question? Boy, I have no idea. 